Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a new tablet from Microsoft. This is the Surface Go. It is a full Windows 10 PC in a 10 inch form factor as you can see here. A little thicker than an iPad but it's running with the full version of Windows 10 and will run just about any Windows application that you throw at it. Uh, we're going to be looking at the $399 version today which is the entry level device with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. They have another one for 549 with the same processor, but it has more RAM and storage. But we always like to look at the low end uh, to see what that gets you. So we're going to be putting this thing through its paces here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds, along with the keyboard and the pen and everything else. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new tablet is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, really nice feeling in the hand. They've been using this magnesium uh, on the back of these devices for a while, and it gives it a very sturdy feel, but it's very lightweight, and it's not all that cool to the touch either. So it feels really nice in the hand. Uh, the front of it reminds me a lot of the older iPads with the thicker bezels. Uh, one reason why you have the thick bezels on here is that there's a place to rest your thumb, uh, but they could have made the screen bigger if they got smarter about how they adjust those bezels on it. So what happens here with these Windows devices is that I can certainly scroll the screen here if my thumb uh, is off the screen, but if I happen to rest my thumb here, it gets confused, as you can see here. So uh, that's why the bezels are as big as they are. So it does look a little dated on the front here, but uh, the other sides of the device here look pretty modern and fresh. It has a signature kickstand, just like all of the other Surface devices have. So if you want to go flush to the device here and carry it around, you can do that, but you can also uh, put it out like so and adjust it any which way you want. The kickstand typically stays in place so you can get a really good adjustment here and you can go down to about that level which is good for when you're drawing with the pen. And speaking of pens, you have some accessories so you can get the Microsoft Surface Pen for another $100. Uh, for another $100 on top of that you can get the keyboard and they have a couple different keyboards. The black one here is the least expensive of the bunch. Uh, it costs $99. They have a few others that are pretty much the same, but with a different material. Uh, those go for a little bit more than that, but you can basically turn it into a little laptop. It actually works pretty well on the lap, even with the uh, kickstand here. So I was able to do that a little bit earlier and was pleased with that. Uh, the keyboard is also backlit, so when you are in the dark, you can see the keys, which was a surprise on something so small. Uh, the trackpad here feels pretty nice. And the funny thing, though, is that because this reminds me so much of the iPad I used to use, I'm always touching the screen versus using the trackpad, but uh, the trackpad is pretty responsive. The keys, though, are a little on the small side for me, so uh, you might have a little bit of getting used to with this, especially if you plan to do a lot of typing. But, of course, you can always connect up a Bluetooth keyboard with larger keys if you want it. Uh, when you do have the device folded up here, it looks very nice, and the keyboard doesn't add uh, that much bulk to the package here overall, so they've really put together a pretty uh, nice little all-inclusive device here that can give you the keyboard that you want, but also the tablet you might want at other times, and when you're done with the keyboard, you just attach it and uh, off you go with it. Now, the processor in here is actually a pretty nicely performing chip. It is a KB Lake processor, so it's based off the designs that we see usually on uh, you know, the kind of higher end laptops. And this is a KB Lake 4415 Pentium processor. It's the 4415Y. Uh, this model again has four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. So the storage is a little bit slower uh, than the more expensive device. That one at 549 has a 128 gigabyte solid state drive, which might give you better performance for loading up applications and that sort of thing. But generally, it's been uh, running pretty nicely for us in the course of all the testing we've been doing on it. The display is 1200 by 800 IPS, very nice viewing angles as you can see here. It just looks really nice. It is very close to the glass, so there's not really a gap between the, the glass and the display itself, so that looks 
uh, really nice to us as we've been testing it. It's in a three by two aspect ratio too. So when you are in landscape mode as I'm in right now, uh, you, do, you don't really have the narrow screens that you sometimes get with these 16 by nine uh, HD devices. So you might have some issues with games conforming to the resolution here, but when you're in an Excel document or something, it'll uh, largely replicate the experience you might get on a laptop computer where you've got a nice amount of usable uh, screen space when you're in the landscape orientation. Uh, the weight on this is one pound, so it's very lightweight. It actually feels really nice for a Windows PC, probably one of the nicest ones I've had. It's actually 1.15 pounds, but close enough to that. About 520 grams, that's without the keyboard. If you add the keyboard, it adds a little bit of weight. It goes to 1.7 pounds or 770 grams. So altogether, not all that heavy. Uh, the battery life though is not quite up to what you would get with an iPad. So we're seeing about five to six hours here doing general kinds of computing tasks, less if you are stressing the processor more. You'll probably wanna keep an eye on things running in the background as well because this is a Windows laptop or device and it's possible to install applications that might do some background tasks that might eat into your battery life. You also can, of course, turn the brightness down on the display to squeeze some extra life out of it. So in our testing, just doing the kinds of things that normal people do, uh, we were getting, again, about five to six hours. But there are ways to uh, charge the device relatively quickly if you need to. Now, you've got a couple of ports here on the side. Uh, you've got a headphone microphone jack right here. It's a combo jack. Uh, right here is a USB Type-C connector. This is a full service connector. So if you have a docking station that supports power delivery, uh, you can charge and power the device, get video out, and then have your data devices work with it all with a single cable. We have a monitor here in the studio that we use uh, that supports all of those functions, and it's great. You just plug it in with a single cable when you get home and you're done, your keyboard, your mouse, uh, your power, everything just goes in through a single cable and it's very convenient. And the cool thing about how this works is that you have yourself a nice little secondary display that you can prop up here uh, with the kickstand and get yourself a nicely functioning desktop setup all with a single cable, which is pretty nice. Now, when you're out on the road and you might be concerned that somebody might trip over your uh, cable and pull your uh, nice little tablet onto the ground or something, you've got a magnetic power connector here. Uh, so you can choose between powering via USB-C or the standard surface connector. And this is magnetic, so if somebody comes by and just rips it out, uh, it doesn't even move. It's very lightly held in with that magnet there. So it snaps in uh, very securely, but is not holding on for dear life. So uh, people will not trip over things and pull your tablet off the desk. So you have some choices there. Uh, not much else, though, for ports. Uh, you do have a micro SD card slot that's hiding under the kickstand, so if you want to augment some of that storage, you can do it. Uh, you can't take this thing apart and upgrade it, so the storage that you purchase is what you're going to have for life. Uh, so you might want to consider that 128 gigabyte version if you do intend on installing a lot of applications, because you will fill up that 64 gigs quite a bit. Speakers are on the front here, so it sounds pretty nice. Good stereo separation. Uh, you have your volume rocker and power button over there. Uh, there's a camera on the top here. It will do facial recognition for getting into your device if you wish to do that. That's an optional thing, but you can do that. Not a bad little webcam, nothing spectacular, but it's functional. And you have another functional camera here on the back for taking uh, quick photos or something like that. But this is probably not going to be something you will be taking a, a lot of artistic photographs with, but it's there if you need it. So let's take a look now at performance. And I've got Photoshop loaded up here, so we'll do a quick little photo edit to see how things go. I've got the Microsoft Surface Pen out here too. Now I did find that you want to get the pen closer to the screen before you put your wrist down, otherwise it will detect your wrist. But once the pen is in range of the screen here, it ignores your wrist and you can uh, lean it up against the uh, display without any problems. And I did find, of course, you might want to put the uh, display down like so, so that you can get more precision with the pen. Uh, so what we're going to do real quick is a little content aware fill. We've got a little blemish on my daughter's shirt here. So I'm just going to circle that, uh, do that, hit this, and we can see how quickly it processes that out. So generally, Photoshop should be pretty good on here. 
I like the fact that you can put the display down like this and really get precise with your drawing as you're uh, working on things there, so that's good. Uh, but I did find, and I, you know, I'm going to get some hate mail about this, but I did find the Apple Pencil experience to be better than the Surface Pen experience has been, partly because I think the iPad is better at risk detection than these Windows machines are. I've done a lot of pen on both, and I really do prefer the Apple Pencil experience over this, but generally here it works fairly well once that pen gets closer to the screen here. Now some folks ask me also about video editing on something like this. You can certainly do video editing on a low-end machine. I recommend sticking probably to 1080p video without a lot of effects uh, put into place. Uh, editing usually is pretty smooth on these, but the export is usually what takes a long time. This is a fanless device, meaning that the hotter it gets, the slower it will go. We'll talk more about its thermal performance in a little bit. So uh, generally, you'll be waiting a long time for those videos to get uh, output, and you'll also be waiting a long time if you have special effects to render and whatnot. So not ideal, but it can do it. I would just do that on the 8 gigabyte version. Uh, things though like Microsoft Word and Excel here do work pretty well. It is, of course, a little clunky to deal with a spreadsheet with your fingers and pen, but you can do it on here. Uh, this is certainly not a limitation of this tablet. Every tablet is tough to use spreadsheets with, but you can uh, select a value here, pull up the on-screen keyboard, and uh, start changing numbers around if you want. So there's some ways you can uh, do some spreadsheets with it and whatnot. They do have a lot of different keyboard options on here, so you can uh, switch to some other keyboard designs that might be more comfortable to type on on screen. But due to the screen size, it's a little hard to type with two fingers, so you might want to do this thumb keyboard thing here. Uh, they also have an option to use dictation or handwriting recognition. So I can pull up the keyboard thing here again, hit that, and now I can start dictating some text. And it's actually pretty good at detecting what I'm saying, so I was pretty impressed with uh, how this dictation feature worked, and we'll turn that off here. Uh, they also have a handwriting recognition mode here, too. So what I can do is go back to here, uh, select this option, and uh, just start writing things out, and it will drop those into the text as I go. It's kind of hard to write as I'm going here, but you get the idea as to how uh, that works. So you can uh, use your handwriting, you can tap on the keyboard or dictate to it, and overall Microsoft Word performance we found on here was decent enough for doing uh, basic tasks, even a little bit of light desktop publishing as well. And we also ran some web browsing tests on it. We were able to uh, load up my YouTube channel and play back videos at 60 frames per second at 1080p without any issues there. Uh, browsing the web, we went to nasa.gov, which is pretty multimedia rich, and it was a uh, very nice browsing experience on there. The device supports wireless AC, so generally uh, throughput is pretty good on overall web browsing, so we were pleased with how everything worked on that front. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 52.1. Uh, that's on the 1.0 version of that test. Uh, we got 28.35 on version 2. And I wanted to pull up the Jumper EasyBook X4. Uh, that's one of these overseas laptops that we get in from time to time that costs about the same that this one does. You'll note that that one scored a little better, but that one has four cores versus two on this one. So the two cores on here uh, perform about as well as four cores do on Intel's lower end processor in the current generation. So all in, I'm pretty pleased with the performance that we got out of this little tablet for uh, what it is, and I'm pretty comfortable recommending it as a web browsing device. Let's take a look now at gaming. Now we begin first with Rocket League, and there we ran at 1280 by 800 on performance settings, and we got between 48 and 60 frames per second. So you could probably actually play a Pretty decent game of Rocket League on this if you wanted to. Uh, we also ran the Java version of Minecraft. We got between 35 and 60 frames per second there, but we noticed it was inconsistent and lagged sometimes, especially when scenes got more complex. We also ran Half-Life 2. We went to the highest resolution option we could, 1650 by 1050, and we were seeing frame rates between 60 and 80 frames per second there. Now we did try to play the game of the hour Fortnite on here, but unfortunately it did not run very well. It crashed quite a bit. Uh, when we did get it running, it would be very laggy and not all that responsive, even at the absolute lowest settings. It could be a function of the fact that this is the four gigabyte model, but uh, by and large, this is, this is really not something I'm going to recommend for people looking to play Fortnite on a tablet. But one thing that did run very well on here was the Dolphin GameCube emulator. 
Uh, right now it's running at 100%, which means that we're getting the same frame rate you'd have on the original console. Uh, this is at its lowest settings here. Uh, this is very similar to some performance we've seen on other Intel devices too with this similar architecture. So I was quite pleased to see uh, the Dolphin performance on here. You might have to tweak things a little bit to get some of the Wii games to run on it at a decent frame rate, but by and large, it was a pretty good uh, upper end emulation experience here for this one. I did try to get some PS2 games to run on here. I was not able to get those to go at the original frame rate. So you might want to tweak those a bit more. I was seeing about 70 to 80 percent of full performance on the games that I tested. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 4,154. Uh, that puts it well ahead of that Jumper Easy Book X4 we looked at in the last benchmark, especially on its graphics performance. It really blows it out of the water on that. Uh, the other thing we looked at was the 3D Mark stress test. Uh, which measures how well the computer does under load because there's no fan to cool this off. So the hotter it gets, the slower it's going to go so it doesn't overheat. Uh, and there we got a failing grade, but that was expected, of 73.5%. Uh, so that means that you will see, and especially in games, uh, some thermal throttling where over time you might see the performance drop off as you really tax the processor. And that's just one of the trade-offs you have when you've got a tablet device here that doesn't have any active cooling. And we also tested its multimedia performance with a very high-end Jellyfish test file. Uh, this is 140 megabits per second HEVC 10-bit at 4K, and it was able to play it back just fine. Uh, that means that anything else you try to play back on here should work just as fine. It's got a decent video playback performance for Netflix, YouTube, and all the other stuff that you might want to run on it. So altogether, Microsoft has done an exceptional job with this tablet. It is not much bigger than an iPad, but you've got the full version of Windows running on it. Great display excellent construction. They picked the right processor this time for it too, so it performs really well. Very few compromises for the uh, size and price point here, and I'm really quite pleased with it. Uh, what I would recommend doing is going with the more expensive one, which has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. I think you might get more longevity out of that, as you won't be hitting a cap of RAM and storage over the next two years or so with it. But if you are on a budget, the 4 gig one will do fine for a lot of the basic tasks. And again, that was the one that we reviewed here uh, for this review. And my only gripe with this are the screen bezels. And this is not an aesthetic gripe. It's more functional because you could put a larger display inside of this device if these bezels were thinner. And the way to do that is to get smarter about uh, picking up the thumb here when it's resting across the bezel. Uh, so you can see here as I'm scrolling, it's kind of confused as to what I'm looking to do. And we get up to the top of the screen there, it thinks I'm actually zooming in. So that's one thing uh, Apple does better, which is knowing what your intent is as a user. And because they got so good at that, uh, they could make the bezels thinner and just ignore the thumb when it's resting kind of on the side of the device here. If Microsoft can do that, uh, they can make this screen bigger but keep it in the same form factor and then it would be a real slam dunk here. But really that is a minor gripe for what is otherwise a really nicely constructed tablet and something that I am very comfortable recommending. And I'm going to probably hang on to mine because I really like this thing. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.